As we continue our study of sequences, we'll find that one of the very nice properties a sequence can have is to be monotone. So let's spend some time today talking about what a monotone sequence is. Just breaking down the word should make it pretty clear what a monotone sequence is. Mono, meaning one, and tone can mean pitch or the general feel or attitude of something. And we can think of a monotone sequence as having one direction. That one direction being increasing or decreasing. So let's read these definitions. Let's say that AN is a sequence. Then AN is monotone increasing if every term AN is less than or equal to the next one, AN plus one. So in a monotone increasing sequence, the terms can only move in one direction. They're either staying the same and not moving, or they're moving up. Each term is less than or equal to the next one. Similarly, we say that AN is monotone decreasing if each term AN is greater than or equal to the next term AN plus one. So in a decreasing sequence, each term can either stay the same or decrease because each term is greater than or equal to the next one. If a sequence is monotone increasing, we'll often just say that it is increasing. Similarly, we would just say that a sequence is decreasing. In either case, the sequence is considered monotone. So if we just say that a sequence is monotone, then it is increasing or decreasing. But one weird thing we should quickly point out about this definition, consider the sequence that we might represent like this, just a sequence of ones. Is this a monotone sequence? Indeed it is. In this sequence, we have that AN equals one. So we have that AN is certainly less than or equal to AN plus one for every N because every term happens to be equal to the next term. But similarly, we have that each term AN is greater than or equal to the next term, since again, they're all equal. Thus, a sequence like this is monotone, it is increasing, and it is decreasing. Of course, it's a little weird to have a sequence that we consider increasing and decreasing, but there's no compelling reason to exclude constant sequences from these definitions, so we don't. Here's another example for you. Consider this sequence, where the nth term is equal to n. Is this sequence monotone? Indeed, this sequence is monotone. It happens to be increasing because each term, a n, is one less than the next term. So certainly every a n is less than or equal to a n plus one. Each term is less than or equal to the next one and so it is increasing. It's certainly not decreasing because, for example, the first term, a1, is less than the next term, a2. And remember, in a decreasing sequence, every term has to be greater than or equal to the next one. Now, how about this sequence, where the nth term is equal to negative one to the power of n times n? The terms of this sequence are negative one, then positive two, then negative three, then positive four, and so on. This sequence certainly isn't increasing since, for example, the second term, a2, is greater than the third term, a3. And to be increasing, every term has to be less than or equal to the next one. Similarly, this sequence cannot be decreasing because, for example, the first term, a1, is less than the second term, a2. And for a sequence to be decreasing, every term has to be greater than or equal to the next one. So this sequence is not monotone. How about the sequence where the nth term is equal to one over n? So the terms of this sequence are one over one, then one over two, then one over three, and so on. 
In this case, every term a n is indeed greater than or equal to the next term a n plus one, and so this sequence is decreasing. We could prove that by noting that n plus one is greater than n, and then invert both sides of the inequality, giving us that one over n plus one is less than one over n. And then this is the definition of a n plus one, this is the definition of a n. And we'd have that each term a n is greater than a n plus one. So certainly a n is greater than or equal to a n plus one. We could also say that this sequence is strictly decreasing because as we just saw, we could erase the or equal to part of this inequality and it would still be true. Every term is greater than the next one. The terms of a decreasing sequence are allowed to not change or go down in value. For a strictly decreasing sequence, each term has to be going down. They have to be strictly decreasing. Similarly, for sequences that we would call strictly increasing. This sequence we looked at earlier is strictly increasing because not only is every term less than or equal to the next one, but every term is less than the next one. Sometimes these sorts of sequences are also called strictly monotone, where every term is either getting bigger, which is strictly increasing, or every term is getting smaller, which is strictly decreasing. Usually these more general definitions work for us, but you will occasionally encounter the strictly variants as well. Here's one more weird example, n squared over two to the n. The terms of this sequence are one squared over two to the one, so that's one half, then two squared over two to the power of two, which is four over four, which is one, then three squared, which is nine, over two to the power of three, which is eight, then four squared, which is 16, over two to the power of four, which is 16, so that's just one, then five squared, which is 25, over two to the power of five, which is 32, then six squared, which is 36, over two to the power of six, which is 64, and so on. This sequence is certainly not increasing, since for example, this term is greater than the next term, but it's also not decreasing, since for example, this term is less than the next term. So here the sequence gets bigger for just a second, and then here the sequence gets smaller. So this sequence is not monotone, but it does have another interesting property. This is a sequence that we would say is eventually decreasing. Although it behaves a little weirdly at the beginning, from this point onwards, the sequence will just get smaller and smaller. So we say it is eventually decreasing because after a finite number of terms, the sequence behaves like a decreasing sequence. And of course, you could state a similar definition for eventually increasing sequences. And in general, we say that a sequence eventually has property X if it has property X after a finite number of terms. Again, it is these more general definitions of a monotone sequence that we'll be most interested in, but it's good to be aware of the variants, like strictly and eventually. The first big theorem that we'll prove about monotone sequences is really cool. It's called the monotone convergence theorem, and it concerns sequences that are both monotone and bounded. What do you think we can say about a monotone and bounded sequence? Remember, monotone means it's increasing or decreasing, or as we saw, it could be both if it's a constant sequence. I'll leave a link in the description to the lesson where we prove the monotone convergence theorem, which will tell us everything we need to know about monotone and bounded sequences. One last thing, here is a list of equivalent ways to characterize that a sequence is increasing, and here are some equivalent ways to characterize that a sequence is decreasing. The first two bullet points are basically just our definitions. Increasing means every term is less than or equal to the next one. 
Decreasing means every term is greater than or equal to the next one. The second bullet point in each list gives us the fourth bullet point by just subtracting across the inequality. The third bullet points are a little bit trickier. For an increasing sequence, the ratio of a term to the previous term is greater than or equal to 1, provided all the terms are greater than 0. If some of the terms are negative, then for an increasing sequence, for example, we could go from negative 3 to negative 2, in which case the ratio of one term to the previous term is equal to 2 thirds, which is less than 1 and we have a similar property for decreasing sequences. The ratio of a term to the previous term is less than or equal to one for a decreasing sequence, provided that all terms of the sequence are positive. For a decreasing sequence, it could go from negative five to negative 10, and then the ratio of one term to the preceding term would be positive two, which is greater than one. And of course, in either case, we can't be dividing by zero. The final thing I'd like to point out before we go, since less than or equal to is a transitive relation, we don't just have that a n is less than or equal to a n plus one for an increasing sequence. We could also say that a n is less than or equal to a m whenever m is greater than or equal to n. So for example, this could be a n and this could be a n plus 100. Certainly in an increasing sequence, a term has to be less than or equal to a term that comes after it not just the term that immediately comes after it. Similarly, for decreasing sequences, we could say that a n is greater than or equal to a m, provided that m is greater than or equal to n. Any term in a decreasing sequence is greater than or equal to any term that comes after it, not just the term that comes immediately after it. So that's a quick look at monotone sequences. Remember, a sequence can be increasing or decreasing. In either case, we call it monotone. I hope the examples and some of the related definitions were helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. <laughs>